been a lot of rain and I don't have a great weather window to really do a whole lot, but do have some, some good bait. Half a bucket full of mud crabs. Something should happen today with that. My confidence goes through the roof of a good day of least bottom fishing with some of that stuff. So water dropped actually. It was 60, 61 for a few days. Some cold late season cold fronts knocked it back to about 58. Alright, I'll start with one of these jigs, see what we can find. So it begins. It's the first blue fish of the season. For me, rather. I'm sure there'll be plenty more and there's going to be a day where I probably won't be able to fish through them, but so far today. It's always such a strange thing. We get like stingrays on the surface in the spring. I think they're usually clear nose skates and I mean there's other ones, but yeah, clear noses, etc. It's a really strange phenomenon. We're ripping here though, man. Without a doubt. I'm try to fish a couple of these slower pockets here. This looks, this is too fast. Springtime currents are all sorts of wonky. Clarity looks like junk too, man. It's gonna be a tough day. Not a good start, man. I think I had a bite. There we go, first fish. Oh man, really? Bring it in the ear. Oh no, 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 good. <laughs> Concerned that was going to be an oyster toad. We did not really set our drag at the start of this trip, so let's keep it Guggen Ahoy, I guess. Oh, nice sheep's head. Hey there. Hey there. Ooh. Okay, for that guy. It's a pretty good one. <laughs> a little bit bigger than I thought I'd see right now, actually. It's a three quarter ounce jig. It's been a long winter. Yeah, 19 and a half. Just about 20. Fat one, too. It's got a nice profile. Gotta make this four pound fish look like he's 13 pounds. First one of the year. <laughs> Probably local fish, but you never know. All right, let's get that first one in the cooler. It's a great size. Thanks pal, we're gonna bleed him out and just put him on ice back there. But what I'm trying to say here, could be wrong on this, but I generally think there's so much habitat sheep's head use that I'll never see uh, a fishing line. Alrighty, I think I'm gonna try somewhere else then. Alright, it's weird stuff. Between all that dredging and nourishment, it's gonna be... This stuff's not easy after all that. I I, I hate it. I see that snot grass everywhere on my, my sonar though. There's like a layer of something here. Do one drift jigging and then we're gonna just keep moving. Let me try the gold jig. Water's dirty. The golden, golden glow is gonna do better. something here. Okay, I'm gonna put a lighter jig on for here then.
Numero dos. This is really tough fishing, dudes. This was an unedited video. It would be rough. I'll put this one back. Just got one. Okay. It's going to take all day to find these things. I don't want to be in the heavy current with that cold front, I guess. Oh, we got another bite there. There's one. There's a few here. It sucked into these rocks, though. Nice. I'm gonna keep this one. Keep a few where you're good. This is supposed to be like the nicest of the next five days. It's like you can't get more than four hours of stable weather. Got your toad. I got him. Nice. Nice, no, no toad. I think Zach got a, like a 13 inch pinfish here. You have to. There is no not eating that pinfish. I'm gonna buy it in the back and I'm gonna come on the video so everyone knows how good of an angler I am. <laughs> Might need a forward. That's, yeah, that's a, that's a slab, dude. <laughs> he is right at 13. Um, I hate to ask you, were you on the bottom? Yeah. <laughs> how deep was the water where you caught that? 20 feet. <laughs> 20 feet. <laughs> you should you should email DMF about that. Take me to your pinfish. I know, right? You're gonna be disappointed if it's a sheep's head. Of course it's a sheep's head. Stupid. Oh. There we go. Finally. Sheep's head? Yeah. I got something good. That's something better. Yep, we got something good. Oh, 
better sheep's head. It's a better one for sure. Oh man, this is tough today. Spring Stampede. This is going to be the last one I'm keeping. Brings it up to four fish kept. It's more than enough what I need. There's one. So that works. People want to get out of the water and everything, but yeah, it, conditions work against you. Hopefully, the audio is pretty decent today, but the windows are tight and it's windy. Poor <laughs> rainy, poor boat. You know, I actually tried cooking one of these whole last year, and I really wasn't. I was watching Reed, the fishmonger's um, sheep's head, uh, how he does it too. It's got an interesting technique. I've always, I mean, he cuts way more fish than I ever will. But I always find that going in through this flat gets the easiest cut to not really fight the fight the fish a whole lot. Okay, not perfect. Missed a little bit there. But Got these big gnarly rib bones on them. Rib cage, rather. That's a lot of bloodline on this fish, actually. So, um, I typically prefer to not eat that. It's, it's, it's pretty strong, actually. Water's looking pretty dirty, I'm not gonna lie. It's a little bit of a cut right there. Tide's forcing over the bar there. It cuts through. Wave's still broke though. Hopefully fish it over this this bar, which shouldn't be hard. We should get our baits in a good zone. All right, yesterday was tough. Decided to, you know, not fight any wind. I've got a similar wind forecast. Instead, well, that's the whiting wagon again. I tried this like two weeks ago. It was loaded with stingrays, so <laughs> can only hope for the best right now. strong this morning so this bait was way out there so 
Oh, he's gone. Guess I won't know what that was. I think that was a bluefish. Whiting. Maybe, maybe with some luck we'll get into them right now. Lighting. Nice one right there. You might call them whiting, Virginia mullet, sea mullet, kingfish, but seems like we finally found a hole with some of these guys. It took me a while. Generally, Yeah, 15, 14 and a half. It's a good size one. Keep a few of these. Tough pick of fish this morning, man. These guys, these croakers seem to show up when that water gets really got stirred up and loaded. Probably my cue to go home and got stuff to do. Just two whiting for, for dinner. Um, to go with my sheep's head from yesterday. So got a few fish. Maybe I'll do a little growing. I do want to try those whiting uh, hole. I call them whiting. Um, I know locally they're typically called Virginia mullet. Maybe with a little bit better bait, I could have pulled something off here, but. I think it's time to just wrap it up. Let this week of uh, heavy west, southwest winds do its thing, warm up the water, just wait for a little bit of more of a, a steady wind pattern that's not 20 knots every day, right? That's what's funny about March. Some pretty good opportunities if you can make the, white, the wind happen, but it's generally one of the windiest months of the year. Believe it or not, I would say my two least favorite months to fish are March and April, but I do think April is a great striped bass month. Some parts. But that being said, I am not grinding that out. I think I'll. Yeah. Ooh, we got one. Uh, 
fighting at least. This is a nice rod right here. This is a one of the Phoenix white rods, trifecta. Another one about 14 inches. Using these uh, Mustad, these are the Mustad Demon Circles. They're okay. Seem to not drop too many fish. That's one good part about them, but. Okay, Let's see if this works. Just gonna scale these guys outside. Gilled and gutted. I'm gonna put these guys in the freezer for I don't know, maybe 30 minutes so they firm back up. And we'll try to do our, our next attempted step here. Okay, so nine times out of ten, you'll see these fish fried up. Great fried. Every now and then you want to try something different. I've never tried what I'm about to do. That's why I have three of them. Hopefully it'll start butchering them. Gave them about 30 minutes in the freezer to refirm up. It was a little warm outside. I uh, wanted to get those scales off. Let's try to butterfly them. Step one, I'm gonna just try to give them a nice clean with this cloth here. All the fins here. And you know, nine times out of 10, I'm with you guys. You can't beat a well-fried fish, but it's fun to try different things for me every now and then. The heat is up on the front. So, I think we're going to make that incision right over that fin there. Yep. Basically, a reverse fling. That's what I would say. But I'm seeing a lot of scales still come off this fish. So maybe, maybe I will be having an uphill battle here on my end result of what I'm hoping to get. Was this perfect? Definitely not. But I was, cur I was generally curious. Okay, that's the spine. Didn't do a perfect job on that, so you can blame me in the comment section. I hand, I, I'm a grown boy, I'm a big boy, I can handle it. But we can trim that up, so not all hope is lost. But basically, what we'll do now is we're gonna, did this with Spanish macro last year, and I kind of enjoyed how the, the end result of that was. So I figured this, of all the drum family, this would be a good choice. Let's see if this part's gonna work out. I guess that's why they nick nickname them hardhead sometimes. I couldn't get a good cut down there. That was too easily. That wasn't an easy cut, that's for sure. Okay, on this guy, kind of butchered splitting him down the middle there. Let's see what I did. So I'm gonna 
salvage this by taking off the head, I think. Try that again. Not too much meat there, so that's okay. It did not go as planned on that part. But we're still, we're still, we're still looking pretty good, I think. This so next part is to take out these rib bones. We're boneless minus this collar, right? And then we got some meat on that side of them. Uh, maybe if I was able to split them down the middle, it would have been easier. But we got something we could try to mess with. Let's see if we can improve upon that in the next one. But maybe I did a mistake here. I'm starting to think I did. This is definitely not a as easy as a yellowtail snapper. Maybe we'll throw it on the grill tomorrow, etc. So let's get all the rib bones out. We did a little better job on this one though. A buddy of mine and I were talking about a food truck and the first one that figures out how to make lizard fish available for, not available, uh, palatable for mass consumption wins the challenge. I've got sheep's head and I've got those sea mullets in the fridge, but I will experiment something. I'm gonna try a prep I haven't tried before and get an idea how it works. And uh, the shrimp we didn't use for bait, I'll just clean them up. <laughs> First one's gonna be kind of basic, right? The idea I'm looking for here is the, it's a, some garlic, so we have garlic, green onions, one egg. When I finally get to the lizard fish, uh, lizard fish are very bony. They've got really white flesh, so uh, they're not like fishy, like, or, you know, just off. Um, they're just loaded with bones. My dad used to prepare pickerel. Uh, sometimes they get called pike in certain parts of the country. But anyway, uh, a meat grinder. So I was thinking, oh, I might as well work on my, my burger recipe for fish. Uh, first time doing it with shrimp. I've never uh, tried to do like a shrimp fish hybrid in the meat grinder. I actually don't use that meat grinder a whole lot for fish. Not the best do-it-yourself cook. I try. Uh, a little bit of a learning experience. It should be pretty good. This is good for somebody who doesn't like fish. I went 50-50 shrimp and uh, fish. And uh, next time we gotta try to figure out, get a little, maybe maybe the, the meat grinder's too rough, but when I work on that lizard fish, I'm gonna need to Maybe just finally chopping the shrimp, putting the, the fish through the meat grinder. Do you have any interesting ideas how to prepare the, the bony lizard fish? I'm thinking the meat grinder is definitely going to be the way, but um, how to really get a, a, like a fun end product out of it. I think next time what I'll do is I'll chop up the shrimp, not run that through the meat grinder. I hope you guys enjoyed watching the video. March is tough, but I'm making, my, making the best out of it. So a couple pretty good days of fishing though overall, man. Today wasn't too bad, all things considered. It looks like I got lots of wind coming still. So thanks for watching, guys. Check the video's description, links to everything you use, and I'll, I'll catch up with you on the next video.